Hi, I'm Randy Robinson. This is Life Today Special Digital Edition. I'm here with Jody Burnt, who is the author of a book called Praying the Scriptures for Your Adult Children, which is which is very specific and very interesting. Good to have you, Jody. Thanks so much, Randy. Delight to be here. As the father, uh, and it's weird for me to say this, but <laughs> now of four adult children, mm-hmm. and technically they're adults, they don't always act like it. Right. But this is very interesting to me because... You know, raising kids, you're praying nonstop for these little kids because it's a frightening world and they do stupid things and accidents happen. But then as adults, I can see how it'd be real easy to kind of say, well, you're adults now. Yeah, you're responsible. Yeah, yeah. We're called to still pray for them. Sure. I mean, a lot of parents do. They feel like, okay, they're raised, the cake is baked. And the sad thing I run into there is um, very few of us have families and children that turn out like we thought they would or we expected. In some cases, it's better. In some cases, it's a disappointing or, or worse. Or I like to say God's still writing their stories. We right. haven't seen the right. end yet. So we're still living through some of those hard places. Um, but I think we need to realize that that doesn't change our call to prayer. You know, just like we say, you never stop being a parent. You know that. I know that. You yeah. also never stop loving your kids right. and you never stop praying for them. Sure, their issues may change. Their needs may change. You know, they're... 17 years old, they might need to be getting into a college, and at 29, they might need a job, and yet we can ask our Heavenly Father to provide those things for them all every step of the way. Mm -hmm. What made you want to write this? My kids um, needed a job. Um, (laughs) No, I mean, (laughs) no, I had written um, an earlier book, uh, Praying the Scriptures for Your Children When They Were Young, um, because I knew what I was praying for my kids, um, uh, mostly that they would be nice to each other. Um, but I kind of wanted to know what other parents were asking God to do in their family. So I yeah. sent out this survey, and this was before email or social media or anything. So I did it on paper, and I put them on our Christmas cards, and I'd put them in my purse, and if I saw you in the grocery store, I'd give it to you. And it only had one question <laughs> on the survey. It was, if you could ask God to do anything for your family, what would it be? And I got more than 100 of the surveys back. And you can imagine the answers. People wanted things like wisdom and compassion, self-control, good friendships, good relationships with teachers, you know, salvation, physical protection, like mm-hmm. you mentioned. Um, so all of these things. And I used the top 20 answers to shape the table of contents for the book because I thought, you know, I want to know what God says about these things. So I began digging through the Bible to say, well, what does he say about protecting our children or praying for them when they are sick and need a healing or... Um, and so that's how that book came about. And then, of course, they hit the teen years, and uh, they started dating and driving. And, <laughs> and I picked up my little li- well, and I picked <laughs> right, up my little right. old book that was all dog-eared. And I was like, "There's nothing in here about dating," you know. So okay. I thought, "Okay, God, I recircle back." And yeah. that book does have dating and driving, but also has some of the tougher teen issues, you know, self-injury and, sure. and depression sure. and substance abuse and, and those kind of things too. Um, and then they kept growing up. And so they hit the adult years, and as I said, they needed things like a place to live, they needed jobs, um, needed friends. You know, you think about that when your kid is seven or eight, I want them to have friends, but when they're 27, it's, and it can be harder then. You know, you don't have as many ways to network on little soccer teams and things. You're out there in the working world, you might not have time to invest in a yeah. lot of relationships. It's true. So um, friendships is a big, a big chapter. So that's why I wrote it, because my kids needed it, and I needed it. Sounds like you've been praying for your kids a long time. Well, <laughs> In a good the, way, old, the right? oldest one, I guess, is 28, 29. I don't know. I never remember how old they all are. But yeah, so it has been a while. And I grew up in a home where we did pray. You know, if you had a math test, you know, pray for that. Right. If, you, if you were sick, pray right. to feel better. But I had never really prayed the scriptures. And I think there's a real power that comes from that. And you know that. You know, God says in Hebrews, his word is active and alive. And Isaiah, my word doesn't it doesn't return void it always accomplishes the purpose for which it's sent so over and over again in scripture we see the power of God's word and I think when we tap into that it animates our prayer life and it it changes our perspective you know like Jesus says if you remain in me and I remain in you ask whatever you wish if my words remain in you and you remain in me ask whatever you wish and it'll be given to you and I used to read that and go wait so if I put a bible verse on something like Jesus's words that means God has to do it you know and I realized no it's not a name it, claim it, guarantee, it's that the more we allow scripture to soak into our minds, the more we read it and dig into it, the more our desires and our prayers are going to line up with the things that God already wants to do. So that's how I think praying the scriptures can really be transformative for a parent. Mm -hmm. Well, I was going to, and so I was going to ask that because you have been praying for your kids a long time. Yeah. 
and they're growing up, grown up. Grown up. Have you seen what differences? I know you've seen some yeah. differences. Oh, so yeah. Tell me the differences you've yeah. seen because you've prayed for them constantly. Well, I will say, you know, God is, like I said earlier, still writing their stories just like he's still writing mine. I, I would never say, oh, yeah, they're great. Um, but they are great, thanks be to God. Um, but he has worked in their lives. Like um, I tell the story in the book of my son, Ravi, who was an athlete at an early age, and we thought that was great but he also had some sort of short fuse issues, um, quick to anger. And by the time he got to kindergarten, we realized that he could hit a baseball or a classmate like equally well. <laughs> and you know, we're kind of like, okay, God. And it got so bad, I would get called to a parent-teacher conference. And this is kindergarten, okay? This isn't like, and, the, and I would want to cry because the teacher would tell me, you know, what he'd done wrong or how bad he was. And I went to my prayer partner and so I said, you know what, I give up. I'm not even gonna pray for this kid anymore. I'm just gonna get him a pack of cigarettes and I'm going to put him out on the street corner because that's where he's going to wind up anyway. This kid has no self-control. No, Well, I mean, I, I just felt so worried. You know that. As a parent, you can get discouraged. You can get weary. You're like, I'm praying, and he's not changing. He just, right, right. you know, somebody came back from a mission trip, and they brought him a machete. Don't ever bring your <laughs> son a machete. You know, and he's like running around the house with it. And I'm like, no. Anyhow, so that year when he was um, in kindergarten or first grade, I went looking. I needed some anchor. And I found in Proverbs, I think it's Proverbs 23, and I'll, I'll misquote it, but I'll get the general gist. And I prayed that for him. May Robbie get wisdom and self-control and discipline. And one translation says understanding. May he become the wise son in whom we delight. May he bring joy to his parents. And I just started praying that over him. In fact, I traced his little hand. It was small then. Now it's giant. Um, and I wrote that verse, and I dated it. And I prayed it all year long. And we began to see beautiful transformations to the point that when I went into his next parent-teacher conference, I looked down and there was a, the word behavior and there was a big zero. And I was like, oh, Lord, I've been praying. We'd seen little good things at home, but now it's a zero still in school. And the teacher said, I'm so pleased with Robbie. And I said, what do you mean you gave him a zero? And she said, oh, no, 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 no. That's an O for outstanding. Oh. She said he's really become a bright spot uh -huh. in the class. Uh -huh. And, you know, now he's 22 years old. And I will tell you, and I say this in the book, it hasn't been, you know, a spotless journey from anger to composure. He still, you know, has passion. But God has bridled that and trained that. And if you met him now, you would never know that he struggled with those things. You know, he's just as kind and patient He's got three older sisters, you know, he's had to be patient. Um, and it's not not because of what I did. You know, I had the cigarette on the corner plan. It's because of what the Lord did in his life. I suspect it has a lot to do with a praying mother. Well, I do so. want to encourage people to pray because God does, you know, he invented prayer as a way that we ask him for stuff. He likes us to partner with him. Um, so, you know, to anybody who would say, oh, it's God's going to do what he's going to do. Yeah, he is sovereign, but he invites us to work with him. It's interesting because you know, I've interviewed a lot of people, and a lot of people that have um, a tough past, you know, yes. uh, have, have made a lot of mistakes. I ask them sometimes, frequently, you know, what what happened to bring you back? What happened mm. to what, what happened to get your attention? How did God get a hold of you? Kind of thing. Probably the single most common thing, and usually it's multiple yeah. things, but the commonality is a praying parent usually the mother. Yeah. I talk to people all the time who didn't grow up where prayer was modeled in their home and they're wondering how to do it. And to that, I would say, just do it. You know, you don't have to sound holy and eloquent. Oh, yeah. You know, you yeah. just talk to your heavenly father. And the second thing I'd say is it's never too late. I don't care if your kid is four years old or 40 years yeah, old. God true. is in the redemption business. That's he true. is all about taking the lost, taking the hurting, taking the wounded and turning the tables. And he just wants to do that for us. Great word. What's the website for people that are interested in any it of the books? It is so simple. It is jodyburnt.com, and you find the books there, and you find a lot of free resources, like downloadable prayer cards and prayer calendars and a study guide if you want to do the book with some friends. So all that on there for free. You are just a wealth of encouragement for <laughs> prayer. Good for you. Let's Good do it. You. Check <laughs> Thanks, out her website. Randy. Check out all of her books, and you can see more Jody when she's on Life Today. That's available right now at lifetoday.org. Thank you for watching and sharing this interview. Be sure to check out the social media for Life Today Television, and you can connect with me on Facebook and Twitter. And if you haven't already subscribed or followed this channel, do it now so you can see more of our great guests.